Previously on Mary to the Game. I'll see you in the one. Gives you time to miss me. That's true. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to Quebec, and next time Mark and I get to spend time together, will be almost Christmas. It would be a dream for Ben and him to sign in Toronto with the Leafs, but there's not one answer to solve all our problems. We need to change the way that we talk to each other. Okay, I'll turn it around. Alex doesn't have a brother or a sister yet. Chris and I both want more kids. We're struggling to have another baby for almost four years, so we just don't know now. We're a little nervous for her flying out to Russia, well, but, yeah. but obviously... The doctor approved it. I've been alone for pretty much the whole pregnancy, so it's important for John to realize that he's having a baby in a few months. It's not just me having this baby. <laughs> Patrick and I just landed in Toronto. I have meetings, I have a photo shoot for Glow Magazine, and we're also launching my new collection, Mary Pierre XO Red Wine. It's stressful because I want to impress the people here in Toronto and show them that I'm professional and that it's also fun to work with me. So we do four books, four little, including the cover. Yes. I took a selfie! <laughs> I'm happy to be in Toronto. Brennan is still skating with Leafs, but he's not getting paid and he's hoping to get a contract. It takes an army. <laughs> <laughs> with having Brennan here in Toronto, it makes me want to push a lot harder and try and build something here as fast as possible so we can live together and we'll have a normal life. I am the Beautiful. Core off. I don't really believe in like life signs, but I do believe that sometimes there's a karma. That's perfect. And that maybe my place right now is to be in Toronto. So we'll see. Yeah. That was a big day and it's not over yet. Photo shoot's done. We're heading to do the launch of my new collection. So it's like all their VIP clients. They're VIP clients okay. in downtown Toronto. And then we're gonna have some of the Toronto beauty influencers and media crew. Oh, nice. Oh, baby. He's just the cutest. Brennan just posted a photo that I sent him this morning. Aww. And he said, I love when this girl sends me pictures. Aww. Hashtag kids stop staring. Oh. I'm gonna cry. Does Brandon have a game tonight? Uh, well, he doesn't play games. Okay, he just... He only practices. Okay. It's been several weeks since the Leafs asked him to skate with them, but people are saying that he could get picked up by the Leafs. I'm keeping my fingers crossed because I know how bad Brandon wants to sign with them. Brandon grew up in London, Ontario, and he was a diehard Leafs fan. So he always dreamed of playing for the Leafs, and he would look so good in that blue. The event is just this way. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Do you guys know each other? Yeah. Okay, sorry. I'm the only one that doesn't know anybody. <laughs> if the event would have been in Montreal, I would have known everybody. So now I kind of have to force myself going out of my comfort zone and introduce myself. Nice to meet you. the world to me to do an event here in Toronto. Never in my wildest dream I ever thought that I would become the face of a cosmetic company. I feel like at this time we're both taking risks with our career. I'm trying to develop a whole new market for myself and Brennan is skating with Leafs but not getting paid. It's a nice event. A lot of people can. Yeah, this community really knows me from my YouTube channel. Hi everyone and welcome to Part of My French. Today I'm doing a special video. They're like, you don't really know what you're doing, but you're like, all of us. I was like, exactly. Sometimes people tell me that I'm very authentic and that I'm genuine, but this is how I am and there's only one MP, so if it works, it works. I want Brandon to sign here, like our life would be so friggin' easy. I'm honestly just keeping my Cross fingers, fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm back in Montreal working on my clothing line. It's a lot of back and forth between Montreal and Pittsburgh. Hello. Good morning. Hello, Alex. 
Ça, c'est Marlene. Ça, c'est Alex. <laughs> Alex is going to work with mommy today. He's going to be the little model so we can try a, a sample on him to see if the fit is right or wrong. OK, you can run a little bit, and after that, I'm going to need you. <laughs> Alex is a three years old little boy with a lot of energy, so it's a little bit challenging to bring it to work. So this is the sample. That's nice. But I did. I know the colors are yeah, the right but color. It's but it's the fit that matters. Today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to try this on? No. Yes, you need to try it on, OK? OK, I'm going to put it on you. Daisy. <laughs> I really like to be a mother, but I'm turning 30 this year. So I feel like to me it was important to have like a career and do something for me. It's part of who I am. We're gonna show Marlene. Now we have it on. Yeah. But it's not easy because I'm full time with him too. You wanna stand up? Oh my god, you're so hey. tall. And after that, you're gonna be allowed to go run. I think this is more like a, a five. And I will just make it like a little tighter to the neck here. No, me. Okay, do you want to take it off? Are we done? Okay, okay. Do you want to high five? I never come back. I never come back. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> no, don't say that. For our first fit, it was really good. I'm going to see you in two weeks. You'll make the uh, adjustment and we're yeah. going to try yeah. it on. It's important to have deadlines because we're running back and forth between Pittsburgh and Montreal. So when we come in Montreal, if it's not ready, we cannot move forward. And we kind of want to be ready for spring 2017. There's a lot of stuff to do in, in the next weeks. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff to do. Because in my head, it doesn't work. No? We don't have enough days. I'm starting to feel all the pressure. But uh, I'm going to be here often. And then the next week, my poor husband. For sure, Chris wished I could be there like all the time when he's home. but. It makes things harder to work on my clothing line at the same time. He has a big uh, road trip coming up. So he's leaving for 10 days. So that's why I'm coming back for 10 days, because he's not going to be home. Okay. So uh, that's why I'm flying back. So I'll have time to uh, yeah. be here and uh, work on everything. It's really important for me to work on my project and things that I want to have in life. If I don't sleep at night, we're going to be ready. Okay. Well, that's it. We're gonna start packing, and I don't want to. Why not? I don't feel like packing up my life again. <laughs> Today I'm packing because tomorrow I'm leaving for San Jose. I've been in Quebec almost five months. It is a long time, but it's never long enough. Well, you don't need to pack. You have all the clothes you need over here. Show me the closet. I haven't seen my closet in five months. Ooh. Fancy. We have houses in Quebec City and San Jose. I'm always torn between two lives. You could have plenty of shoes for six months. Oh man, I forgot about those. Okay, I I'm gonna need to bring some boots. My husband is so good to me. He goes through this every year. Honestly, once you get here, you're not gonna wanna leave. I don't think so. I am so bitchy. This is the nicest house we own. I like this one a lot. Mark will do his best to just cope with me because he knows how hard it is to leave everything. But I am on his back and I resent him for making me leave my life behind. You know, because you're getting five days off in February. I was thinking we come to Quebec. Four? I thought it was five. What the hell? The fifth day, I have a four o'clock flight to uh, two o'clock flight to make. Okay, well, that doesn't count as a day off. I'm sorry. No, it doesn't. It's four. The whole season, my life, Schedule his, his schedule. Not a lot of freedom, so we just work our life around the shark schedule. Everything's gonna be fine. Yeah, easy for you. Easy for all of us. I think I've spent enough time far away from my family, like been there, done that. Now I want to be close and spend time with them. But then also need to spend time with my husband. It's like I'm coming to San Jose. Bye, sweetie. Bye, babe. I feel like until he retires, I'm just dealing with it, and it's one season at a time. It's insane. I've never seen this many fans. I had no idea that John would be a star in Russia. What are you doing this weekend? Look at the schedule right there. They're playing in the trail. Maybe that will be my first game. Второй вечер.
to show my superpower. <laughs> I've just arrived in Vladivostok, Russia. The last time I saw John, I was five months pregnant, and now I'm eight months pregnant. Okay, tell them all, first period, first period. It feels amazing to see John and to be reunited with him and kind of make up for lost time. John isn't playing tonight because he broke his elbow in the previous game. They were in a shootout. He was going to shoot the puck, and he ended up tripping over the goalie and slid into the boards. I had no idea that John would turn out to be a star in Russia. He's one of the top scorers on the team. When John played in Nashville, or even when he played in Minnesota, we could go anywhere and nobody would know who he is. It's insane. I've never seen this many fans. Oh, it's so cute. The team has a lot invested in John. He's one of the highest paid players on the team, so that's why they need him to be playing. It's also a huge loss for John. He was doing really well. He was on a streak of scoring goals, and, and him being out kind of cuts the momentum. Did you get a chance to talk to the team doctor? Well, they're not busy. You don't want to distract them during the yeah, game. Yeah, just anxious to figure out what's going on. Right now, it's up to the team doctor and the results of his MRI to see how long he'll be out. Ooh. Baby's kicking. Originally, the plan was for this trip to be our last chance to be out together before the baby's here. And now the entire focus has shifted, and it's what's John's recovery going to be like and figuring out what the next steps are. So what's good here? Let me pull out my translator app. Because I'm in town, John decided to organize a dinner with some of his teammates. Anal ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> this can't be right. I have very, very, very limited skills in speaking Russian. When he started to get KHL offers and making that jump, was it scary at all for you? Yeah, just the unknown of coming here with a baby. Yeah. Jenea is the wife of John's teammate, James Wright, and she has a baby just a few months old. Well, you're a lot braver than I was because when he first started kind of dropping hints at the yes. thought of going to the KHL, I was just so close-minded to it. Once I got to Russia for the first time, I was completely surprised. It actually turned out to be a really great place. How's practice been the past couple days? Standard. Standard. Being injured, you feel like you're not part of the team, you know? John's been in a terrible mood since he got injured. In a flash, you get injured, and then now you're on the outside, kind of just being a cheerleader, and like, it's nice that you're here, but if I was alone, I'd be pretty depressed. I think it's even tougher that you're in Russia, like, when you're injured. It's definitely disappointing. I came all the way out here to really bond, and now the entire mood is really sad and it's just not what I expected at all. I'm supposed to meet with David, assistant GM, and Daniel, the doctor, to, to see what they're saying. Hopefully, uh, they figure out something. It's so frustrating not knowing. It really makes me nervous being this close to having the baby and not knowing what the plan will be. Right now, all bets are off. The worst case scenario is that the team makes John do all of his rehab and recovery in Russia, and then he wouldn't be able to make it home for the birth. I totally feel helpless. I just don't know what to expect. It's going to be hard, I know that, but I just don't know how hard yet. We never like sit down and talk about what I, what we want to do and what our next step is. Yeah. Once you can prove that you can be bankable, that's when you become attractive to big companies. Today, Patrick and I were meeting with an international brand agency. You're such a girl next door, and you're just so relatable. So I'm really excited to do more things with you. Well, thank you for the opportunity, because I'm constantly trying to get better and, and develop new opportunities and work with different people and learn every day. They're pitching me companies for me to be a spokesperson for, and it's quite cool. We represent Hershey. We represent McCain. You already have hair and makeup. I kind of feel like a big deal right now. What's the experience been like for you with the English market and what your the expectations in English? I honestly never thought I would work in English one day. 
And then meeting Brandon obviously changed everything. Right. Because I was not speaking a word of English besides yes, no ketchup and toaster. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. I've been saying it for two years now that I want to work in English. A lot of hard work finally paying off. Victory! <laughs> Every creator has their own brand. Yeah. <laughs> and so your brand is... He's a mastermind behind this. <laughs> I think it's, it's building a brand that's aspirational to women. Marie-Pierre is accomplishing her dream, but not adapting her dreams to be in a relationship. When I met Brendan six years ago, I told him, if you want a girl that's going to follow you around, well, we better stop it now. I don't want to be seen as a hockey wife. I want to be seen as what I am for my talent and what I can bring to the table. Even though Brendan was making a lot of money and it would have been easy for me to just live off of him and, and be Brendan Proud's girlfriend, I was like, you're gonna have to buy a straight jacket because I'm gonna <laughs> like literally throw myself on the walls at one point. We both have our hopes very high for the city of Toronto. That he really, really, really wants to sign with the Leafs and I would really like to be able to live with him, which would feel good for once. I'm just looking forward because you're very honest, very authentic. I'm pretty excited of what could come out of this. pictures from first year of high school. <laughs> oh my god. Honestly, I went in that day and I thought, man, I look good today. <laughs> Tonight I'm very excited because I'm having my girlfriends and my sisters over for a little goodbye dinner. Okay, so we're gonna make some mojitos. Oh, okay. here's for you. Thank you. Uh, are you supposed to crush raspberries? Well, oh, it's too late now. <laughs> It doesn't look good at all. I would definitely say that Marie's my best friend in the world. I've known her since we were little. Cheers. We know everything about each other, and I mean everything. So you can find your name and have a seat. I have my best girlfriends here. We've known each other since high school, and I am very close to my sisters. Being far away from family is so hard because they do take great care of me, and I'm very much on my own in San Jose. Oh my god! <laughs> My family and my friends are a big part of why I get so upset about leaving Quebec every year because they know the real me. That's a mom. <laughs> not Mark's wife, not the hockey wife, just um, me, Martine. <laughs> I was a bit of a tomboy because I loved hockey so much. So like, my life was all about hockey. I guess it shows, I don't know. <laughs> so how's Mark doing? How's the season? I think he's lonely a little bit, but I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go see him, take care of him. It's our life, I'm happy with it, but sometimes I'm like, oh man, it'd be nice to have a nine to five job. Yeah. Once in a while, I'll kind of daydream about what it would be like to have a nine to five job and Mark is home every weekend. And we just knew Friday night is free, we can do whatever we want, you know? During the season, we don't have one weekend together. They, there's always a game. So when I see people that work nine to five, they know their husband's gonna be home every night and every weekend. I think everyone that um, looks at my life, they'll think, oh, it's so great, what is she complaining about? But this hockey life can get very lonely. It's just hard leaving, because you guys are all here. Being a hockey wife, you just don't get to choose your own life. Like, it's just, you choose the person and you marry their lifestyle. <sighs> You'll be back <laughs> soon enough. What's happened with your next baby? I think I took for granted that one morning I'm gonna wake up and have kids. That's not the way it works. The girls and I just arrived in San Jose. I play Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm getting homesick already. If I'm homesick and he goes on the road, that's just a bad combo. Do you want to get sushi or you want to get a plate? I think sushi. Sushi? Yeah. When I come home to Montreal, I always try to have a little moment to uh, see my good friends. Tonight I'm having dinner with Marie Audrey. We met when we were in high school and she's one of my closest friends since that time. What's new? I introduced stuff on the clothing line. I had the fit for the boys shirt with Alex. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> We're working on the fit right now, and we'll see how it goes. And after that, we'll move forward with it. That's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, what's happened with your next baby? 
Um, Mario Driz knows pretty much everything about me, so it's really easy for me to talk to her about anything. There's a reason why I had the miscarriage, like, keep having them. When I had the last miscarriage, the doctor wanted me to run some tests. It looks like there's a, a little, like, genetic problem okay. going on. Now we know that the chance of having pregnancy until full term is lower than a normal woman. I think the first time I got pregnant after Alex, Alex was nine months. Oh. So Alex is gonna be four in two months. So it's been like three years almost that like we're struggling <laughs> with it. So when Alex was born, it was probably the best moment ever in my life. You hold your son for the first time and you see his face. That moment is so like perfect that for sure you want to have a, another child. Every woman like would think it's gonna be like yes. fun. Like, oh, I'm gonna make love and I'm gonna get pregnant. And yeah. then, like, we all dream of that scenario. I took for granted that one morning I'm gonna wake up, wanted to have kids. And life taught me that I was really stupid and that's not the way it works. How Chris is doing with all of this? Uh, since he's a lonely child. Chris really wants a big family, but I don't know, we just don't know now. Chris never had siblings, so he really wants us to our first siblings for Alex, but we'll see, like, we have Alex, we should just be happy right now about having one healthy child. Of course, we want more, but yeah. When I started to date Chris, I put my career that I wanted on the side, and now I'm almost 30, it's hard for me to have a family, so. That's kind of two punch in the face. I think sometimes in life you just need to focus on the great things and instead of focusing on what like, oh, I wish I could have that and that, like, I think we should just be grateful for now about it. We have a couple options. We could go through uh, in vitro and for sure there's adoption. But for now, I mean, what we can do, it's, this is it and we just need to be strong and move forward. So, we'll see. The girls and I just arrived in San Jose. We took a private plane. We used to drive, and then I got fed up with the one week road trip. Okay, can you sit still for just like one minute in your life? I know you're excited to see Papa. Oh, did we miss Papa? We missed him so much. I always have one foot in Quebec no matter what, but the upside of everything is I'm excited to be reunited with Mark and the girls are there too and we're together. Wow, this doesn't even feel like our house. Okay, okay, okay. We've done a lot of renovations over the summer. We took over the lot next door so the girls would have enough room to run after squirrels and chase skunks like they used to. Are you kidding me? <laughs> we redid the pool so that little Macy can go in easier because the steps weren't good for her. <laughs> Our dogs are so spoiled, but why not? So when's the last time we saw each other? New York and Pittsburgh, which was oh yeah, a month ago. Because Mark's been kind of like on his own program with his hockey schedule, and I've been in Quebec. When I get back in San Jose in the fall, it's always very hard for me to get readjusted to living with him. I'm getting homesick already. It's just weird sitting here. The last month, I had something every day. Every day there was something happening. My life is not as full in San Jose. I think that's why I'm so invested in his career because I cannot work in the United States. I do not have a working visa or a green card. I wish I had work stories to tell or talk about my colleagues or things, but that's not the case, so it's always hard for me. You have a lot of events coming up. I play Tuesday, Wednesday. You play Tuesday? Yep. And Wednesday? Yep. Shoot, man. I just came here and I'm barely gonna see you this week. Okay, so tonight's our only night together for a whole eight, seven, eight days. If I'm homesick and on top of that he goes on the road, that's just a bad combo. Let's take it a day at a time. You're trying to be positive. That's what I do.
Mark's very supportive, so I'm very lucky. I already had in my brain that there was a chance that you would miss the birth, and now with this injury. Knowing that since we've met, being a hockey wife, there's so much uncertainty. One little injury could really change our entire future. You can't leave all of that there. I can do whatever I want. No, but you got a closet for that, and you've got like tons of space everywhere. I like things out in the open. Yeah, but it's painful. Now I have to open a door to get my clothes. The last few days I've been very busy in Toronto, and Brennan has been very busy skating with Luce as well. You got shelves everywhere. I got a couch right there. Yeah, the couch is for your guests. Guests? Who? How many guests am I having? I just can't deal with that shit there anymore. I like cleaning. It's very good for my mental health. When I'm cleaning, I'm not fighting. <laughs> Why are you pushing me? <laughs> you squish me. Yes, that's what you deserve. What I like about being in Toronto is yes. at night we get together and we have dinner and we watch TV or we go see a movie. Okay, what do you want to go see? So it's just like what a normal life could be. <sighs> Can I finish this text first? Hold on. We fought enough. I think the conversation we had in New York was eye-opening for him. Mm. We're finally having like good times together. What are you doing this weekend? Are you going to London? You don't want to come see me? You don't want to come see me? I think I've done more I come see you than you came see me. Well, that's how this relationship works. How about we change things? <laughs> see where the team is. Look at the schedule right there. Oh, they're playing in Montreal. Maybe that will be my first yeah. game. Ma can you imagine? You're investing in his presence in Toronto. So I'm guessing you're not doing that for nothing. Did you end up uh, speaking with Babcock? Yeah. Yeah? Mike Babcock is the coach of the Maple Leafs. And Brennan had a meeting just to talk about like his future with the team and, and a little bit of what's going on. Yeah. Well, that's between us. Brennan knows that I'm a big mouth. So he just doesn't tell me anything because he doesn't want me to repeat it. Well, can you at least tell me like if it's positive? Yes, it's positive. And? I mean, I understand that what you talk about what your coach has to stay private, but I also want to know what our planning is. He trains with the team, but doesn't play. Why would they keep him around this long if they're not going to sign him? They must have a plan but it's hard on him because he just doesn't know. They have to make room for you. They need you yeah. so desperately. Yeah, that's not my decision. Right now, we're kind of nowhere, so it could be just magical if we would get signed with the Leafs for both of us. It was good to have meetings today because I feel like there's a good momentum for me here. I like talking about like where we, we want to live, and then I'm going to have like more meetings in a few next weeks. In the next few weeks. <laughs> I'm never going to be able to work in English. I can't even speak. Yeah, that's why I'm correcting you. Yeah, but what if I, I film a show here? Well, then... I might be based here, and then we could find a place here. And then summer's in London. I'm so tired of feeling... I hope that he will get a contract. I really do. I'm so tired of feeling the blue. in the market. John just misses spicy food so much. I think it'll cheer him up just having something that reminds him of home and a meal that he's been missing for a while. We haven't seen each other for three months. I've seen you yeah. more than I've seen my own husband. It's crazy. Before John left, I was so nauseous with the pregnancy, so it's been several months since I've cooked him a good meal. So I need two... Uh, chleb, 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 yeah. Da, da, da. Thinking about John's injury has been overwhelming my entire life the last few days, so it's great just to go hang out with Juliana and have some fun at the farmer's market. Oh, pickles! I want to get some pickles. <laughs> Haven't oh you God. heard when you're pregnant, you just like yeah, crave, crave salty things? Yes. Nice and spicy. 
Aren't you supposed to be the one looking after me when I'm pregnant? Isn't that how this is supposed to work? And I'm the one taking care of you? I think it goes both ways. <laughs> I definitely envisioned this trip to Vladivostok going a lot differently. Now all the attention is focused on his injury and not really on my pregnancy. So it's definitely not a baby moon. Good lunch, thanks. Mm -hmm. Do you think we'll get any clarity tonight on what's going on? I really hope so. Tonight, we're going to an Admiral game. John will have a meeting with the team trainer and the assistant GM tonight just to get more clarification on the injury and what the prognosis and timeline would be. It's really driving me crazy not knowing. This is how it operates here, though. It's just so un They don't even know. It's just killing me. I know that they want to make sure that John is getting the best care possible. But right now, without any answers from the team, it's easy for my brain to imagine the injury being worse than it actually could be. I feel like I have to be strong for you. You should not have to worry about me. Let me worry about you. I feel like the pregnancy has to take a back seat right now, you know? It, it should never have to take a back seat. Your career is what pays the bills, and I don't want to have that in jeopardy if you're not getting the right treatment. No, I have a lot of people in my corner. I would hate for this to be a career-ending injury. John is obviously the breadwinner, and we really depend on his salary, so it's important that he does whatever it takes to rehab correctly and to be able to get back and play the way he was playing before. Don't cry. I know, I just want to <laughs> like, be there for you, and it kills me that I'm not. You're here. I know, but only for another week. Not even a week, like, what, I leave in five days? There's definitely a heavy weight on my shoulders trying to hold it together for John and to be there for him and to be really positive, but as hard as it is, I just sometimes have to break down and cry. This is our last year yeah, of this long distance stuff yeah, because so. I don't know, I'm getting soft or something because I'm <laughs> less independent soft, than I used like... to be. Now I feel like I need you more and of course. I just want to be here for you. Our situation is always different. It's not a standard relationship and you've known that since we've met, you know, being a hockey wife, it's there's so much uncertainty. You know, I, I already had in my brain that there was a chance that you would miss the birth of the yeah. baby. And now with this injury and not knowing what's going on, like it's just, it adds a whole nother level of uncertainty that I wasn't ready to, to deal with mentally and to, to figure out. And it's just so crazy that our lives revolve around a game and one little injury could really change our entire future. Well, it's been a couple days. Hopefully they come up with a plan. We gotta find the team doctor. And yeah. Talk to him. Yeah, we will. I love you. Thank you for lunch. When we met, you were not supposed to be a hockey player. And I still loved you. If I was a nerd, would you still love me? I'd still date you, but you need that body. Every time you see a Quebec girl, you're like, oh, yes. It's always like a good start for a connection. So how is everything? Pretty good? Are yeah. You? Yeah, I'm busy. But it's good because when Brennan's away, I'd rather work 23 hours out of 25 and just keep my mind busy. I was just in Toronto for some meetings, and now I'm back in Montreal. For me, it would be impossible to just decide to quit everything and go be with Brennan. And I think we're both accomplished. That's one of the reasons why we respect each other so much and love each other so much. Are you having a good season? Chris always wants yeah. to push yeah. the, the limit. He's one of the best defensemen in the league, so. MP and I, we both like uh, fashion, and our uh, boyfriends are working in the same field, so she kind of understands uh, my situation, and I understand her situation, too. So tell me about the business. It's a kids clothing line, yeah, between uh, zero to six years old, okay. boys and girls. MP is a fashion icon here in Quebec, and she has a lot of experience, and her career is doing so well, so I wanted to discuss with her about different things. It's yeah. just a, a tiny, like, uh, collection we're just yeah. putting out, just to kind of test the market a little yeah. bit and see, like, the interest. But you can't start too big, otherwise you're gonna face plant. Yeah. So it's a lot smarter and safer yeah. to start slow yeah. and then build up. Yeah. I think that it's a very good idea from Catherine to see that it's actually possible to have your own identity and to create something and to pursue your own dreams at the same time as you're supporting the guy you're in love with. Yeah. Are you stressed? A little bit, yeah. No, not a little bit, a lot. <laughs> what are you stressed about? MP is really easygoing. 
so it's not hard to talk to her. Like it's creativity, so you never know how people are gonna react and if they're gonna like it or no. It's easier to stay home and not try everything than trying something new and there are risks, there are doubts, it's stressful, but it's part of the process, I would say. Where did you get the idea from? I was spending so much time like having fun yeah. and dressing my son. In one year, my son's gonna start school, so I'm always questioning myself when he's gonna start, what am I gonna do? And I told Chris, I'm gonna talk with you about Helix, but at some point, I need to talk to you about like other Sorry. things. Yeah, I need yeah. to be like me. Chris has a really intense career, and I feel that as a couple, it's important to, that everyone's bringing something to the table. It's so good to have something on your own. Yeah. I think it's the best decision you could have ever made. Yeah. Because sometimes people don't realize about hockey girls is that everybody went to school, everybody's super smart, yeah. and then because you decided to follow your husband and that you're not American, you can't get yeah. a green card. It's hard to work there. It's impossible for me to work there. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just happy that you came up with something that you can do and that you're passionate about. Yeah. I just look at her. She has a lot of dreams, ambition, and she's working herself really hard to accomplish it. So she's not just a beautiful face. The old package makes her attractive, and I want that too. At one point in your life, you have to choose yourself. And it's hard to do that. It's, it's, nobody said it would be yeah. easy. Right now, I think this project keeps me busy mentally. I think it helps just to move forward in my life. Chris, seeing you accomplishing yourself and being independent yeah. and doing your own thing will make you a lot more attractive. I can't remember the last time we cooked together. Don't remember. Our favorite thing to do together is eat fondue. He knows I'm a little upset that I left Quebec, so fondue is definitely a way to have Quebec in the house. Are you uh, toasting something? Because I want to drink this. <laughs> Thank you for getting on the plane. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Well, I'm happy you guys are See back. how I feel when I wake up tomorrow. I think he's trying to ease me into my coming back to San Jose, and he knows it's hard on me, so he's going to be uh, extra sweet today. Should I go home for New Year's Eve? I don't want to be by myself here. Right, you play on the road to 27? And the 31st. You would let me celebrate New Year's by myself? No. You're not going to make it back in time. There's no way. You don't have to think about your plans. You're, you're playing a game, but can you imagine if I'm here by myself? I don't think Mark is happy about that because it costs a lot of money because I don't want to leave the dogs for New Year's and it gets quite expensive to charter a plane back and forth. Remember when I used to pay for everything? When I met you, you I were- I was working, dude. You were making $35 a week, that's not work. 32, 64 every two weeks. Mark was playing in the junior league back home and I was working for a fashion company. I was a loss prevention specialist. Man, those times were good times. They were, we were spending a lot less. <laughs> I had a great job, I had a great career ahead of me, and Mark um, fell in love with me, and boy, did things change, you know? When we met, you were, you were not supposed to be a hockey player. You said you wanted to be a... Um, an engineer. An engineer. And I still loved you. Yeah. Before you were drafted. It's true, huh? If I was a nerd, would you still love me? But would you have that body? <laughs> well, I'd have to be in the gym every day then. Look, if you were my, let's say, accountant or banker or whatever, I'd think, yeah, he's good looking. I'd still date you, but you need that body. It helps. You'd have to work extra hard to get me. When he realized that I was uh, willing to give up my life for him, I think he realized how big that was and that we're in it together. Well, I'm happy you're back. And I'm happy the five of us are back together. Yeah. It's a little slower pace over here mm -hmm. than in Quebec. It's been long and boring without you four. We have to learn to live with each other again. <laughs> Even though we signed for this hockey life and I completely chose to be a part of it when I married Mark, we made it our own. Not everyone has the partner that I do and he's amazing, so I really lucked out. John's meeting with the team trainer and the assistant GM. My plan was to come back for the birth of my kid. It's really scary not knowing what's going to happen. The news is not good. The more I wait, the more I worry. It's so 
so hot in here. Either I'm sweating because I'm nervous or I'm just hot. I have no idea. Tonight, John is meeting with the team trainer and the assistant GM. We'll finally get some resolution about what the treatment plan will be for John. Turn it down. Well, it's hard when everything's in Japanese. What, what do you mean? Just this. Come on. I've got one hand. I got traffic. You're worried about What that. temperature? I don't know temperature. <laughs> if you're hot, you turn it down. There we go. Thank you. It's super frustrating having to deal with this bad mood, but I can understand because he's injured. How's it going to work? You'll go in the locker room for a little bit, and then um, I guess we'll watch the first period in the stands. Yeah, I'll meet you in the stands. OK. Right now, I'm bracing myself. If the team tells John that he needs to stay in Russia for his recovery, then it's just me, and I'm on my own for the birth. This is the hard part about being married to the hockey life. Right now, I feel like I need John, and the team needs John. And we're both pulling for his attention, and we both want him. You got some good news for me? It's definitely nauseating and really scary not knowing what's going to happen. Хорошо и правильно. Says the news is not not good. There is a uh, a fracture with uh, misalignment for the heel 100%, and so you have 100% mobility. It's going to have to be operated on. Do we know where that's going to happen yet? We're hoping by Tuesday or Wednesday you'll fly out to Germany and we'll do the surgery there for you in Germany. OK, Germany, that's good. Three weeks of hard cast and then three weeks of rehabilitation. All right. I feel like if the recovery plan was easy and quick, he'd already be back with me by now. The more I wait, the more I worry. Six weeks from whenever the surgery takes place is going to take us to that December break. And my plan was to come back for the birth yes. of my kids. So I know we'll have to talk about that. The worst case scenario would be that John won't be able to be with me by my side for the birth. The only person that I want by my side is John. I can't imagine someone else that could fill his position. Hello. Finally. Finally, right? I've been yeah. waiting. What's going on? There's a fracture in the elbow. And then I'll ligament tear, so um, I have to have surgery. I'll go to Germany in a couple days okay. and have the surgery there. The surgeon here in Vladivostok isn't comfortable doing the particular type of surgery that he needs. And there's a surgeon in Germany that has a lot of experience working on hockey player injuries. It's three weeks in a hard cast and then three weeks in a different cast. And So six weeks starting from the day you have your surgery? Yes. OK. Well, the good news is that I'll fly back for the birth. Yeah. It's a huge relief, a huge load off my shoulders that I know that John will be there for the birth. It'll be good to have you home. It's just bittersweet. You know, I wish you were playing hockey. Yeah, me too, but. With no hands on the wheel, I can feel you wherever I go. I got what I wanted. John will be home for the birth, but at the cost of he's missing games and he's missing out on a lot of time with his team. It's a terrible situation, like, I'm missing probably 10, 12 games or whatever it is. Like, just focus on the positives and just let it be. Yeah. But I'm not going to lie, and I'm excited to spend the last few weeks of my pregnancy with my husband. I don't know which way. Left. Up here. Leva. Leva. Next time on Married to the Game. Are you okay with your any child career to be over? I was going to marry child career is over. Is it? Is it not? Rate yourself out of 100 the last 10 games. Definitely higher than 80. Oh, I put you under 80. This part just. Come on, just try it the other way. I'm so frustrating. If this is any indicator on how we'll do as parents, I'm pretty embarrassed. We are moments from touching down in Austria. It's hard for me when things are going on at home. Why do I feel like I'm the only one who's sad? Well, I mean, I'm kind of excited to play hockey again. Yeah. It's that moment where you have to say goodbye. I'm never going to get used to it.